In this video, we will look at the fourth step to solve linear programming problems using the simplex method. The fourth step is to establish a basic initial feasible solution. So let us recall the first three steps. The first step is to construct an LP model of the problem. The second step is to standardize the problem. And the third step that we have seen is to create a simplex table. Now, as we had seen in step number three, the simplex table is not yet complete. And as part of step number four, we will establish a basic initial feasible solution and that will lead us to the completion of this simplex table. Now, in order to understand this step in detail, let us go back to the concepts of solving linear programming problems using the graphical method. So typically in a linear programming problem using graphical method, we have the decision variables x1 and x2 plotted on the x and y axis of a graph. And then we take the constraints and plot them as a straight line. So we have constraint number one and constraint number two. So basically this area here, which is common to both the constraints, let's say this is O, A, B, and C. So this area here, O, A, B, C, is the feasible region. Now, generally the next step in the graphical method is that we take the slope of the objective function line and then start plotting a family of parallel lines to each other with this slope starting from the origin and moving away from the origin. So basically what we'll do is we'll take the objective function line and uh, we will take the slope of that line. Now I'm just doing a hypothetical case. So let's say this is the line which represents the slope of the objective function line. And the first line will pass through the origin. And then we will construct a series of parallel lines to this line. and we'll move further from the origin. Now, in case of a maximization objective, where we have situations like maximizing profit and so on, the farthest point from the origin and on the feasible region represents the optimal solution because the farthest point will give the maximum profits. Now this farthest point can be let's say a C or a B or a A depending on the slope of the line. But we know that the optimal solution is found at one of the corner points of the feasible solution region. The corner points are O C, B, and A. Now this is the same premise on which the simplex method is based. In this method, we start at one of the corner points and at each step or iteration, move to an adjacent corner point in such a way that the value of the objective for the iteration improves at every iteration. So typically, as we saw in the graphical method, we'll start from the origin where the values of both x1 and x2 are zero. Also, what this means is that in our case, because x1 represents the number of type A gears which are to be produced, and x2 represents the number of type B gears that are to be produced. 
if the values of both of these are zero, that means there is no production. And neither of the gears of type A or type B are being produced. So this solution becomes our basic initial feasible solution. So now we know the values of x1 and x2. Let's find out the values of s1 and s2. So our first constraint is 20x1 plus 10x2 plus s1 equals to 1200. Now let's put x1 and x2 both are equal to 0. So our equation becomes 20 times 0 becomes 0, 10 times 0 becomes 0. So s1 is equal to 1200. Same thing with the second constraint. So 40x1 plus 10x2 plus s2 is equal to 1600. Now x1, x2 is 0. So both of these are 0. So s2 becomes 1600. So both our slack variables have the maximum value. In other words, what this means is that as none of the gears of type A or type B are being produced, the time at the blanking shop is not used or is completely idle. And also the time at the gear shop is completely idle. So at the basic initial feasible solution, basically x1 and x2 are 0 and s1 and s2 are non-zero. Now the non-zero variables that means s1 and s2 are known as the basic variables and x1 and x2 which are 0 are known as non basic variables so basically non zero is basic and zero is non basic again non zero is basic and zero is non basic now with this information let's see what we can add to the simplex table now i need to add two columns here the first column is c b and c b represents the coefficients of the current basic variables in the objective function so this is important so c b represents the coefficients of the current basic variables in the objective function. So what are the basic variables? So basic is non-zero that means s1 and s2. So we know what the basic variables are and now this is coefficients of the current basic variables in the objective function. So coefficients of s1 and s2 in the objective function. Objective function is p is equal to 10x1 plus 4x2 plus 0s1 plus 0s2. So the coefficients of s1 and s2 in the objective function are 0 and 0. So here what we do is we enter the coefficient of the first basic variable that is s1 0 and then the second one which is again 0. Now the second column is the basis column. 
and it represents the basic variables of the current solution. So the current solution means the basic initial feasible solution. So this is important because later on these values are going to change. So let's understand this. So I'll repeat again. In the second column, we enter the basic variables of the current solution. Now the basic variables for the current solution are the non-zero variables which is S1 and S2. So first we'll put S1 and S2. So basically what you can also do is first enter the basic variables and then take their coefficients from the objective function and place it in the CB column. Now let me add the word basic variables basic variables. Now we need to add another column known as the solution values column which is represented by B. So B represents the solution values column. Now this column takes the values of the basic variables which in our case is S1 and S2 in the initial basic feasible solution. So I'll repeat again. This column takes the values of the basic variables that is S1 and S2 in the initial basic feasible solution. Now as per the basic initial feasible solution the values of x1 and x2 are 0 while the values of s1 and s2 are 1200 and 1600 respectively. So let's enter these values in the simplex table. So for s1 the value in the basic initial feasible solution is 1200 and for s2 the value in the basic initial feasible solution is 1600. So this completes our simplex table with the basic initial feasible solution. Now the next step is to perform optimality test on this basic initial feasible solution.